G'day guys and welcome to ZooTube, your home of body weight training. Today guys I'll be talking about how to increase running speed and stamina. To all the runners, your ears should be like, tell me, tell me about it. So guys we'll be discussing increasing stride length, range of motion, increased speed, endurance and the movements. The movements I will show here will be in the link below, okay, you'll see me training on the paddock. So make sure you click on that link to understand those movements. Number three, hip, lumbar, I need an R, hip, lumbar, thoracic mobility, strength to reduce injuries. I'll see you on the other side. Hey. Check it. Hey, check it. Put the place up. All right, guys. I'll start off. I put the R in the lumbar. Look, how to increase running speed and stamina. There is so many people out there that love, love running. So many running groups around the world, running groups that I consult with as well. Athletes who do triathlons and all sorts of things, I help them with this. So if you are a runner and you are looking to increase your speed and you are looking to increase your stamina, this is going to be an awesome, awesome video for you. So let's get straight into it. Increasing stride length, range of motion. I have consulted with so many athletes over the last 10 plus years of teaching the Zoo Bodyweight System guys, showing them one movement, showing them one bodyweight movement from the Zoo System has given all of these runners a PB or a personal best by just incorporating one movement. That's it into their warm up, into their movement prep, doing it more and more as they see the value that it creates for them and then they want to learn more. So make sure you click on this link because I'll be showing you the exact same movements that I use with athletes around the world. Guys, how does range of motion or range of movement, people say it different ways, how does that increase your running time? Well, if we increase your stride length, it is less steps per distance, which equals a PB. I'll say it again, because it's pretty simple, okay? And all of this stuff should just make sense. So many coaches, there's so much content out there that is just too complex. It's not, okay? I'm a body weight specialist, it's not. If you increase your stride length, it is less steps per distance, which equals a PB. If I can increase your endurance and your stamina and your mental resilience, well then this rate of stride length will actually increase, which will also equal a PB. Does that make sense to you? It is so simple. So for all the marathon runners, distance runners who are listening in, we need to increase your stride length. It's as simple as that. If you sit on a 150, 155, which most decent runners sit on, heart rate, 150, 155, if I just increase your stride length, maybe you're stepping a 1.8, if you then step a 1.9 or a two meter stride length and you hold that same heart rate, do you think you'll get a PB? Well, mathematically, the answer is yes, because it's less steps Per distance, your stride length has increased, your heart rate has stayed the same, so your times will come down. How cool is that? How cool is that? Boom! Now you wanna know what the movements are and you're all clicking on the link, but hey, you need to learn this stuff as well, okay? So that's increasing your stride length and really value that, okay? Number two, increase speed endurance with the movements you will learn. I can't stress this enough, I'll tell you a story, guys. I was working, had a guy who uh, was a triathlete, a decent triathlete back in Australia, and he had, a, he had a knee injury. So all he could do, he couldn't cycle and he couldn't run. So he came to me and he trained with me for six weeks just doing the zoo body weight system. That was it. He then got on his bike and he had his circuit how do you circuit set out? What do you reckon happened on his very first ride? His very first ride. Now for most coaches listening in, most cyclists, most runners, we can apply this to running as well, same circuit because the same thing happened to him. His very first ride, he got a personal best and it, it blew his mind. He had to ring me up because he didn't understand it. And I said, okay, just see how you go during the week. Second, third, broke the time again, broke the time again. This is six weeks off a bike. 
This is six weeks not running. Traditional thinking, I don't think traditionally, I'm way outside the box, okay, which is good, way outside the box. That's where you need to be. So many coaches are in here, in here, and just getting it so wrong. Traditional coaches will tell you that that's not possible because he's not doing volume training, okay? He does, he's not building the proprioception that he needs to do with the bike. It's not sports specific. It's this real pigeonholed view of what he is doing. I teach you all of this other stuff outside here so you can drag it inside this pigeonhole, whether you're a runner, a cyclist, whatever it is. We're talking about running. So guys, when I teach you how to build endurance without running. So the movements I will teach you, you can do right here in your lounge room. You can do them in your backyard. These are movements that will test your endurance and your stamina way worse, way worse than you running. And as you get more efficient at doing these body weight movements that are low impact, so they're saving your gait, they're actually opening up your gait, and when you're running, what are you doing? You're closing your gait. You're putting all this compression on your spine. How many of you runners have sore backs? Put your hands up. Oh look, the whole lens just fogged up from all the hands going up. How many of you guys have sore backs? And simply because it's boom, 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 the backs are locked up. So the movements inside here will not only open you up, they will actually test your heart rate conditioning. And I mean they'll test top end heart rate conditioning. Very, very sports specific, especially if you're a runner and you need to break away from a pack. I'm not getting ahead of myself, so that's cool. You know when you're running with a pack and you need to surge, you need to surge, you need to surge, or you come to a hill. Hill's the perfect time to surge because everyone's trying to step back a gear. These movements that I'll teach you, they'll pretty much rip your heart out of your mouth, man. Like they are so effective you, you, you'll be falling apart doing these movements, but they're low impact. So wh what am I trying to get across to you? The heart rate conditioning that this will build, the stamina, the endurance, the speed that you will learn inside these movements of the Zoo Bodyweight system, you will be able to directly transfer to you running. And if you're in a pack and you need to surge, you're sitting on a 150, 155, but when, you, when you're doing Nathan's movements, you're well over 100%, and I'll say that again, you are well over 100% heart rate, but you're doing that on a regular basis at home, you can transfer that to your run because you're sitting well within your comfort zone on a 150, 155. So you can surge to a 180, boom, Boom, bring it back. Surge again, boom, bring it back. Surge again, and you know what's happening to the pack, right? The pack's just disintegrating because they can't keep up with your work rate. How cool is that? All right, number three. Hip, lumbar, thoracic, mobility, strength, reduction of injury. We use it as an injury reduction strategy. That's the way I work with athletes. You need an injury reduction strategy. So guys, again, in these movements, I will teach you how to open up your gait. So many runners, I ask them to show me one movement and their, their thighs are like at parallel, they're grimacing in pain and I'm like, is that it? How do you feel? I don't feel too good, Nate. How's your lower back? I can barely stand up straight. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So when I show them movements and I can increase, guys, I can increase your squat depth six, eight inches, maybe 10 inches with some athletes. I've increased their range that much within two to three minutes. Two to three minutes and they're stunned. They're stunned, there's no equipment involved. And they're like, how come no one's teaching this to all of us? Well, that's why I'm doing this video, right? To teach it to you. So guys, we need to open up your hips. We need to free your lumbar. We need to open up your thoracic or the middle section of your back. We need to mobilize them because mobility is strength. They're directly related. Lots of people think mobility is flexibility. Forget flexibility. I don't really care about that, okay? I care about mobility. Mobility is strength through range of motion, strength through range of a joint. You need strength, okay? Mobility, we need to reduce your injuries. This will also help you understand how to connect the top half to the bottom half. So many runners that I talk to, they don't put any emphasis or importance on top half. I'm not talking about doing weights and building up. 
because it's all power to weight ratios, right, with runners. I'm not talking about doing weights or anything like that. These movements will build top half strength neurologically, just in the firing patterns, okay? So when you need to pour it on, on a hill or you need to surge, you need to drive with those arms as well. All of this ties it together. So make sure you click on the link below to learn these movements. That wraps up how to increase your running speed and stamina. Guys, if this has been cool for you, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Please share it with other runners that need to learn this stuff so they can increase their run times. And as always, I'll see you after this on the paddock.